I need to grab me some tools. Birds around here really be ruthless, I'm telling you. You sons of this still available. <laughs> change something up do something a little different okay so the honda sold okay it's gone it just left this week it went back home japanese girl bought it <laughs> sorry about that that's is that racist found something on the marketplace and it's very close i'm gonna go look at it might be a little replacement for the honda for the time being but not like permanent just for a short period of time so let's go check it out. Go check it out, that means I'm gonna check it out. And if there's footage after this, that means I bought it, okay? And I, I went and looked at it, and I'm heading back home right now, but I'm going back again to look at it one more time because if it needs a head gasket, I'm out. If it doesn't need a head gasket, I'm in, maybe. I didn't even make them an offer yet. So I test drove it though. And it ran really good, and it doesn't have signs of a head gasket problem, except for the fact that they have to keep putting coolant in it. But I drove it, and I don't, I don't know, I think it's leaking somewhere. I don't think it's a head gasket, so I'll get back with you. Well, boys, I bought her. Uh, I gotta go grab some money. Uh, I, I purchased this for a thousand bucks, okay? Uh, it's a 2013. I'll show it to you when I get into the house because it's drivable. I can drive it to my house. It's every couple days they have to cool in it. I tested it. It tested negative for a head gasket leak. Still doesn't mean that it doesn't need a head gasket. But it could use some tires. It, uh, they do have drum brakes they're going to give me with it. Uh, they had two tires. They're winter treads. I told her just keep them and sell those. Um, air conditioning works it runs good honestly and it's turbo it's probably a bad thing honestly if you're buying one of these I would avoid the turbo model all right so after title transfer fees stuff like that that was two hundred twenty seven dollars so I'm in this thing twelve hundred and twenty seven dollars now so I'm I'm broke that's what I'm trying to tell you <laughs>
All right, so hear me out. You heard what I paid for it. I didn't pay hardly anything for this. The AC works. It drives fine. Um, yes, it does need a little bit of work. The tires are okay. They're, they're not bald. As you can see, we have tread. It's a different tread than the back. But it has tread, front and back. It has small scratches all over nothing bad the interior is actually very nice this thing has a lot of options it had a lot of work done to it this battery is new this turbo is new this valve cover is new so there's a lot of stuff going on here what they told me was it was using coolant so i went over tested for uh head gasket failure no combustion gases in the coolant so i checked it at the reservoir yeah, I got no combustion gases there. It's not like overpressurizing. It's not overheating. I drove it for a while. I put coolant in it and I drove it for a while. It's, it's either coming out somewhere or it's bubbling it out, okay? I just ran it to the house here and uh, after I parked it, I could feel it gargling right here from this hose right here. And that hose comes from the turbo, okay? It goes through the turbo. So I don't know if it's because there's air in the system it was gargling, but... There's a bleed procedure on these things, and uh, you don't just put coolant in it. You get air in the system. It's hard to get the air out. There's a little plug right here. See this? I cracked that loose, and air came out until coolant came out. And then I put the cap back on. Now I can probably top off the coolant tank. If that was it, and it just had air in the system, and it was gargling it out, that was an easy fix. But honestly, the thing rides smooth. It drives good for a thousand bucks. Like I couldn't, I can't go wrong. It's got 123,000 miles on it. The reason why we just cleaned it like that is because there is so much buildup of oil and dirt and it could have been coolant. I don't know what all was all over the place. I mean, the, the transmission was covered. The throttle body was covered. Like it looks, look. Transmission, you could not see the aluminum. Look at that now. Look at that. This was all dark. There's still some crusties on that. Focus in on it. Yeah. Still some on it, but it's not near as bad. This hose was like saturated right there where the clamp's at. Uh, it was just dirty all over. And then it, to look underneath, there was oil and stuff on everything. So that's why I got down underneath and look at that. Clean the underside. So now, if it does leak coolant, I ought to be able to tell where it's leaking from. But this is a clean title. It's registered. It's not inspect. I need to get it inspected. It, the inspection ran out two months ago. So I, I might go ahead and get it inspected and then just drive it for now. Uh, to I can either figure out if it's using coolant or if it's leaking it. You know, maybe I'll lay a mat underneath it or a piece of cardboard underneath it after it dries out because it's going to need to dry for a while now that I got all... In fact, I might start it up and run it. Here, we'll let you hear it. So this is cloth interior. It needs cleaned up a little bit, but it's honestly, it smells nice inside. And uh, it's really not a bad place to be. Now, it's got power seats, which I need to go back a little bit. Power windows, power mirrors. It's got the nicer stereo. It is not a push button. I did just fill it up with gas. Now we have a airbag light and that is for the occupant sensor. Yeah, the AC works great. It's working right now. Only bad thing is, is this vent is uh, broken right here. Just one flip one. Oh, oh, it just needed to go back into place. Okay, I fixed it. I think it has an exhaust leak. Kind of squeaking. Hmm, that's weird. Okay, so like I said, I think there's an exhaust leak, or not. I don't. I, don't, I can't tell. If it's leaking or not. The definitely was hit right there. I don't feel anything. Could have a cracked manifold 
only way to be able to tell that would be to take this heat shield off. Because it's kind of quieting up now. I'm wondering if it ain't got a cracked manifold, which the manifold is part of the turbo. So you really can't do anything about it but replace the turbo. And they're cheap on these, which it was already replaced. If you can't tell, that's pretty fresh. All right, so no cracked manifold, but it's probably this. That's supposed to be punched into the uh, exhaust right there, and it came out with it. I didn't even hardly turn it, and it broke off. It looks like it's been broke off for a while. So, no biggie. I think it's smart to leave that shield off anyways, because there's coolant lines and stuff right here. There is a oil cooler right there that the antifreeze goes into, and a couple other things. So, anyways, when I shut it off before, it was gargling through this hose. Actually, look at it right now. That's, that's no good. Do I not have a, oh, I don't have the cap on. Well, that'll do it to you. I was about to call it. I was gonna say, oh, I'm, I am three for four on doing head gaskets on these things, even though I thoroughly tested it out there. Now I've had it run for a while. Now, I, when I ran it this, this last time, I didn't realize I had that cap loose. So that wasn't letting the system pressurize. Um, so then it started bubbling. It was boiling the coolant or what happened, but now I let it cool down, bled it here, filled it up, put the cap back on, and now it's not boiling over and it seems to be fine. I'm not 100% sold that this head gasket's blown. I just don't think. So I am gonna thoroughly check this thing for weeks outside of the engine before I finally decide whether it is. Now, now, another thing we can do, which would really set it off, if it if it is a head gasket leak and it's coming out, when the system's pressurized right now, if I shut it down, let it cool off, if there's a blown head gasket, that pressurized coolant should work its way into the cylinders. I can pull the spark plugs once this cools down and check in there to see if there's coolant in the cylinders. That'll be the tall tell sign. I don't really, I don't smell coolant out the exhaust, and we don't have any smoke. Although, we have vapor. It, it, it doesn't smell like antifreeze at all. But I think that's just condensation or vapor coming off the tailpipe. Yeah, that's just water. I actually think I fixed it. Because... The last time I ran it, when I shut it off, it was bubbling here, and it was bubbling up into the tank. So it was boiling over, is what it was doing. It was boiling because there was air somewhere in the system. So the, the second time, I accidentally left that cap off, which let the coolant boil again, and that's why we were having the, the, the boiling in the tank constant. So this time, <clears throat> I bled radiator made sure that cap was tight now i read that these things are a pain to get the air bubbles out um, but this time when i shut it down no bubbles in the tank so i think that's why they were losing coolant in this thing because i think it was boiling itself off i think it was evaporating out now she her man was running this and she wasn't running it so she couldn't tell me she couldn't remember if it was a couple days he had to put cooling in it or if it was after a week or whatever i could see maybe a week it would boil over eventually uh because of having an air bubble in the system somewhere and i'm thinking that's what was going on so hopefully we don't have to do anything on this i don't want to it runs too good to have a blown head gasket i'm telling you but it does have a tick and i, I think and it goes away once it gets heated so i'm pretty sure one of these exhausts uh the exhaust gasket might be leaking a little bit. Once it gets up to temperature, though, it's fine. So, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I wasn't going to put this thing on the road right away because I, now I, th I thought it was going to be doing a head gasket. But now I think it's I think it's going to be fine. So, yeah. All right. On to the Murano. All right, change of plans, kiddos. I just switched to my new camera. I got a active subwoofer for in the Murano. It goes in the spare tire well, just like the Bose one does. 
and um, I decided I wanted to look up the diagram so I know what I'm doing instead of just going in blindly like I normally do. So I got the all data for it, got the wiring diagrams, um, got into it. Here is the, the Bose system. That's the amplifier over there where I have it highlighted. That is the rear speaker in and out, or I mean the rear speaker's um, inputs into the amplifier. So that's preamp. So that's what we want to tie into because this subwoofer has an amplifier built into it. So we're going to go before the amp, tie into that, and we're just going to splice into them. We're not going to cut the wires off. We're going to solder into them. Um, and then I looked up the connectors. Now there's more to this diagram. You go up and you figure out what connector it is. I found the amplifier and what connectors go into the amplifier. Then you go to the connection pinouts here. And um, connector B121 is the one with the rear speaker inputs. Man, I, I'm just shocking myself right now. I'm actually going to do something correctly. Anyways, the amplifier is supposed to be under the rear seat bracket. Don't really need to remove it. I just need to be able to get to the plug and get to the wiring. And we're going to be looking for a, a white wire, a black wire, a red one, and a green one. And uh, that's pin 26, 25, 24, and 23 on connector B121. Do you get all that? Write it down. Originally, what I was thinking was I'll just take the plug right off of the Bose speaker and run that in. I don't know how that would work because that's amplified power coming in to the Bose stereo. I don't want to mess this thing up. This is a JBL um, active subwoofer. I bought it. I actually got a really good deal on it because I bought the passive subwoofer. Whooper. Passive subwoofer on accident and it turned out it was the only one they had and it was defective on Amazon. They said, we're going to send you out the active one instead. So I paid $300 for this and it's originally like almost 500. It's only, I'm talking. So they gave it to me for like 300. So yeah, we're putting it in and it's beefy. And I already test fitted it in the back and it fits perfect. Now it does talk, touch the mat in the back where you put stuff in, but there's like this thick of uh, padding on the bottom of it. That's what it's touching. And when you put something on there, it, it pushes down on it. And that's the bottom side of the sub. It actually sits upside down, so the sub faces downward. So you're not hurting anything by putting weight on that. And it's all steel construction. It's not plastic. So let's go out there, and I'll show it to you, and then we're going to get into this. This isn't what we signed up for. Yeah, well, this is what you're watching. Holy, what's your problem? Yeah? You want somebody to play with? Well, you'd have to be a garage kitty, because I'm going after the garage. So you're going to take your frustration out on my sneakers. Why you do this? Hey, get off my sneakers. So to back this up, I bought a Boss Audio wiring kit, amplifier wiring kit. I've used one before. It's not 4 gauge, it's 8 gauge. But this is not a high powered subwoofer. This is going to be, yes, it's going to give a good bass, but it's not going to rattle the trunk lid, okay? It might. There's a possibility it might rattle the trunk lid. I don't know. It's pretty beefy, honestly. But I think it's like 200 watts, 400 max, something. Something of that measure. So, okay. It's hot as balls out here today. Not really feeling that. Don't think I need to disconnect the battery on this because everything we're doing is going to be, you know, speaker wires. And then the power wires, yeah, we'll get it. All right, so I have found the amplifier. It's right here. They don't want you taking this thing out. I'm telling you that. They have riv It's riveted, this plate, the spare tire thing. It's riveted in. I really don't want to drill out my rivets, so. How do you even get to that? Hold on a second here. Give you the, See, this is a pad I told you it's hitting. And then they give you this here. Here is the Bose subwoofer. Oh, look how convenient that is. We really don't have to do much anything. So, oh, which one's the wires in and which one's the wires out? All right, so right here, these smaller gauge wires right here, I'm going to guess that this one right here 
wonder if there's a number on it. Uh, this has to be the inputs. Now let's, where's my, where'd my diagram go? I wanted to say, I'm like, this, this can't be it, but I think what we're looking at is it from this angle, not the, the straightforward angle. So let's see, it should be 26 green, 25 red, 24 black, 23 white. So green, red, black, white. It's exactly what we need. So we will splice into these. I'm going to cut this back here so we have a little bit more. We'll splice into these so the inputs into the amp will still go into the amp, feed the rear speakers, but we're also going to feed the new amp with the input from these. And then I have some special connectors to connect it to the new amp. The garage still smells like CVT fluid. I gotta do a review on this sometime, but there's still something coming, but it's supposed to be like a really good air pump. We'll find out. So here's the kit I got, I did before. Comes with everything you need to wire an amp. And like I said, it's eight gauge, and this isn't like high power. What I really liked about this sub is the controller for it. So here's the wiring harness. And we're going to use these. Now, I have special connectors for those, and I'll show you. So, I've had these things for a while. Never used them. Let me, actually, let me make sure. Are those input? Yes, they are. These are going to be perfect. So, I'm going to run a wire off of those feeds. You see, you've got a plus and minus on these. You're going to just wire them right into these. Plug them into those connectors. And that's going to be our sound uh, outputs right into the amp. Right here is a ball of speaker wire that I had. That's gonna work perfect for us. Another thing I forgot to look up, and I should be able to find it on the diagrams I printed out, is I need a power feed to the amplifier. Instead of running a remote wire the whole way up to the stereo and tapping in there, the amplifier's right there. So we're gonna find the power wire to the amplifier, and that's gonna be the remote wire to turn on this sub. I act like I know what I'm talking about. I don't really, I really don't know. Anyways, here it is. Look at this thing. And I can't, I can't even pick it up one hand. It's beefy. That's a nice 11 inch sub. Yeah, those Bose ones, they have like two uh, six inch. Like they're, they're little itty bitty speakers inside those Bose. And then here's what I really like. I told you, the remote. So you have your gain, your bass boost, your low pass, and then you can change the phase. Everything, so like normally on an amplifier, all of these controls are back on the amplifier. So if you want to make any fine adjustments, you have to go back and adjust them normally with a little screwdriver or something to adjust all these settings that are now going to be in the palm of my hand up front. So I don't have to go make my fine adjustments in the back and go to the front and see if it sounds right. This is, this is awesome, right? Right? I had to go empty my camera card. So... While that was happening, which takes a while because it's a big card, I came out here and wired this. Now, I taped everything up, but I did not tape two up, and I'm going to show that to you. So, on the back of this plug, if you remember, the green, red, black, and white right there are our inputs to the amp. So, they're going to be our new inputs to our new amp. This white wire right here is the remote. Are we focusing over here? So the white wire right there is the remote to the amplifier. Now, you can see I just cut the insulation back, spliced, soldered. I did that for every connection and then taped them. I'm not going to tape that whole bundle then. And then I already taped this one up. But here is that connector, as you can see, and it plugs right in. This is the left inputs into the amp, and uh, then I soldered and crimped ends onto the end of those wires, and then they clamp in there tight. So now I'm going to tape that up, and tape that up, and then tape my bundle up. And so we got remote... We got our inputs. The only two that we have to wire now is our main power and our main ground. So that was the hardest part. The The next hardest part is just running the power wire up to the battery because it has to go the whole way to the battery. And then there's a fuse, inline fuse we got to put in. The ground is going to be really easy on this. These have a bare metal chassis brace right there. 
and uh, the bolts are also bare metal. So I'm gonna put a looped end, well, I'm gonna get the ground wire out of that kit I got. We're gonna solder these together. Then we're gonna put a looped end on and then just bolt it down with one of those bare bolts on that bare metal bracket. That's chassis ground then. So then power wire, that's all we gotta do. So let me do a little bit here and then I'll show you that. I have never wired something so professionally in my life. Look at that. I mean, I could probably put a little more tape in there, but yeah, that looks pretty good. Anyways, um, get this old sub out if I can. Oh man, I make those tight. All right, so this isn't the last step because I still have to wire the remote in and I want to put it in the armrest, so that might be a challenge. Don't know yet. I, I don't know if I got to drill a hole in it or, or what I got to do, but I'll figure it out. Anyways, uh, I need to figure out a way to send it through the firewall. Now, there is a big rubber grommet back there. But this kit also comes with... Let me get one out here. This kit also comes with little rubber grommet so I can drill a hole in the firewall and then put that in and run it through it which might be the way we go I just got to make sure I'm in a good spot when I do it and I'm not drilling through into a the brake booster or into any wiring harness or anything so I need to get my headlight out man it's hot I need to get my headlight out and look up in here and see if I can see that that loom where it goes or whatnot. Anyways, I'm gonna get it routed through there. If I had to drill a hole, I'll show you that. If I don't, I'll show you that. All right, now with this, I made some magic happen, okay? That's a quarter inch bit, so I put a quarter inch socket on there, got up in behind the dash, drilled a hole right below. Well, first I had to cut the carpet back, okay? So you can see right there, I put a rubber grommet in, I cut a hole right there. It's behind the uh, emergency brake bracket there. But I drilled a hole, put the rubber grommet in. The power wire, as you can see it right there, runs out and it comes out right between that wiring harness and the brake booster. It's actually kind of behind the brake booster, so you don't really see it, but... Here it is, here's the extra wire we have. I'm gonna cut some of that off. Um, now, I'm not gonna hook that up yet because I wanna wire the remote. And all you gotta do is I just gotta figure out a spot to put it. Comes with plenty of wire here. We're hooked up back here, it's ran through. You don't see any of it. This, we're gonna route backwards because it's a lot harder to route this through your vehicle as opposed to this. So we're going to probably drill a hole in the bottom of the glove box because I want to run it inside of it. I'm going to have to put the seats up. The back cover comes off. Come on. Oh, why is hers? I didn't know she had a sweatshirt in there. She'd been driving this. Um... I think there's a screw there, and I think you just uh, pop it off. I'm not even sure if... All right, we are plugged in. Everything's plugged in. I found a set of keys under the seat. Um, 
it's ran under the carpet right here. I drilled a hole from the outside. You have to drill it way bigger than you would expect to because of, let me show you why. I, I don't, why? This, this thing. So the hole has to be at least that big to get your cord through. So that's, that's what sucked. I drilled it like a certain size and I was like, oh, it fits. And then I got to that, I was like, oh, that that's a bad design. So anyways, and there's plenty of cord in here and it sits right in here. There's like a pocket. I could pull it out and stick it right here. Last but not least, power. So let me cut this to better size, put it in, and we'll be good to go. flames <sighs> now, my calculations are correct I did this right so I'm gonna go ahead and start this thing because I'm dying sweaty sucks now I need to connect this to my phone and then we'll see I have everything turned down the whole way oh there's power to it look the switches are lit up All right, so it's working. Oh, it's, it's moving. I don't know if it's rattling against the tire. I'll tell you what, let me get everything closed up. Oh, let me get everything closed up and then we'll see how it sounds. I had to put some music on that actually justify bass. So you can see, I'm not maxed out right now. If I do max it out, it does get a little bit of distortion. There it is, maxed. Keep it at a good level, like a little above half. It's like perfect, and that's what I wanted. I didn't want my trunk rattling off. It's, it's about perfect right there. All right, I'm gonna throw this thing back together real quick. How about we get the wife's reaction? Because she drives it more than I do. So let's see if I can get her out. I might not be able to get her out of her hole. We have to wait, she's recording a TikTok. Okay, now we've recorded the TikTok. Now we have to take the caterpillars off her eyes. Her eyelashes. She said she had stick ons on. Come on. Like be warm, on. No, the AC's on. No. I have it running. Oh. She said she's having a problem with her one boob popping out, and I don't see where there's a problem. This the left one, you always like it's a little swollen or something. I don't know. That wasn't me. <laughs> this ain't about the dirt on me. I feel like we're in a mom, mom band bumping. It's because we are. Stopped already. Well, there you go. I'm dirty. And I'm going to clean up things here and uh, go have some wings with some friends. So if you like this video, smash that like button. Consider subscribing. Hit that dislike button if your mom loves bumping in the trunk. We'll see you on the next episode of Unwrapped.
Hey, come here. Come here. You come running to see me. Well, my stinky, you just got a bath. Look how fluffy you are. Look how fluffy you are. He's so fluffy. Oh. Look at you all clean. Huh? I know. I already got him. Well, your bird was flapping there. Come here. Let me see you. The main coons. Floofersen. Are you going to bite me? And Sheldon. Sheldon. Where you go? Come back. Come back. Come back. Oh, you stew man. Stew man didn't get a bath. No, you didn't get a bath. You're getting one tomorrow. That's what mom said. Mommy said. I have no control. You going in to see what she's doing? Stella. Hi, Stella. <laughs> Do you haven't been bath yet either? It's gonna happen. I didn't even touch that thing. I, know, it's very I just walked past it. We say goodbye. Do you want to?